Don LaFountain, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Al. Glad to be. As you can see, I just unpacked uh, a large Hancock-style beaver trap, and I've got the printed directions here, but if you could, I'd really appreciate it if you'd walk me through how to set this type of trap. Sure thing, Al. Uh, the, the directions can be a little bit vague. From, uh, it's nicer to see it actually done. Uh, what we got is, a, as Alan said, is a Hancock-style trap. Uh, this trap's been around for over 60 years. It was designed for capture and release of scientific uh, use in, uh, of aquatic animals, primarily in this area, it's beaver. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the different parts of it. There's, uh, show you what it is, show you how to set it. And uh, what we have right here where we're starting off, this is actually, as this trap is folded up, this is the way you'll get it. And when it's closed up and oh, you wanna let the animal out, this is actually the release hole. This is the frame, this is the hinged frame which is gonna come up and around and actually hold the operating jaw of the trap, the chain link section. Uh, later on, we'll show you that. But we have the first thing we have to do is put it together and what you'll notice is there's a couple of, couple of toggles on here, on one on either end, and these, uh, these rings. And to put this trap together, set it up, it's just to bring this over so that it locks in place. And what you wanna do is just run your ring over the toggle. And the toggles can be a little bit tight because it is new, but they'll loosen up in use. And another thing that uh, I'm sure you'll notice right now is this thing is really nice and shiny. Don't let that bother you because the beavers that you're after are used to things that are man-made and uh, this is not gonna have any uh, detriment to this trap whatsoever. But you run your toggle over, your ring over the toggle, and it takes a little manipulating once in a while. Just spin the toggle around until it holds the ring in place. That puts the active jaw, the, the, uh, the frame part, which is gonna hold the active jaw. If you notice this rod right here, this rod is an extension of the, of the whole pan area and uh, dog area, which is, fires the thing off. There's, let me turn this around now. And this rod comes up from, the, from that area, and this is another dog, and this fits right inside this notch right here. When this jaw, the active jaw, is brought down, fits into an area here, this is run up through the chain link as that's done, it's put inside the notch, this piece is brought back over, and then it's set down this end in the chain, down in here. And we'll show you that in a second. But once it's in that position, you can see it's rigid, and, it, and this is the frame, it's all set to go. Okay, well this is the position you're gonna want your trap in as you go to set it. Laying down, you notice that the, the frame portion of it is slightly elevated. What we're gonna wanna do is bring this down simply by stepping on both sides of the frame. At this point, we're gonna reach down. We're actually gonna grab the chain link. And when we pull up on it, we gotta release the lock, free up the frame. Get a good grip on both sides of the frame. Pull it back towards you. Now at this time, while you're doing this, make sure that those toggles and those rings are still in their set position. Pull this down. Get it, you can notice I put one knee on top. At this point right here, I wanna pull back all the slack in the chain link, get that pan down. Right here, we're gonna take and bring this dog up through the chain link, like we showed you earlier. Comes up through, sets down into this notch. Now, I really wanna make sure it seats in this notch. Another thing to remember, if you got this out in the woods, this notch sometimes fills up with dirt, so you wanna check it prior to the, you know, bring it into this position. So get it set in there, set it in the notch, and grab the extension bar and bring it over. You can see where when this comes over, it actually hooks over the top, holding this bar down. Now you're gonna reach up here, you're gonna push down on the bar, and at the same time, I'm gonna move my other knee right onto this frame to hold it down. And right here, I can push down on the bar and take this ring and this is the actual safety of this trap. Take this ring, bring it over on the bar, and at that point you can see it's holding it all in place, holding this down, but I'm also securing it with my knees. Now at this point, the, in the directions, the written directions, they talk about using a 42 inch two by four as a, as a backup safety. 
This is where you would put that, that in. It sits here, it sits in the frame here, goes up, attaches on the top, making this diagonal area, keeping the trap from slamming shut. I would recommend using that the first couple of times you set this trap, just to be on the safe side until you're actually comfortable with it. At this point, my body weight's holding the, the active jaw down with a chain link. Now I'm gonna reach up here, here's the dog, comes over the top of the extension bar, and here's the pan. The notch in the pan is right on the top. We're going to push down on the dog, lift up on the pan. This is now in the set position. Dog comes across, down into the notch. Our safety ring is still in position, and I'm still on the trap. If we have our two by four, that'll be in there. What happens when this is set, and how this works, is that the beaver swims in from this, this direction. Our bait is set up in the back, which we'll show you, explain that in a few minutes. But that's set up, we have four to five inches, three to four inches of water, maybe five depending on what you're doing, but no more than that. Over the top of the pan, three inches, four inches, keeps ducks and, and uh, if they happen to be swimming by. Also keeps your uh, muskrats that are coming by from firing this off. The beaver comes in, presses down on the pan, releasing the dog. And that's just how that goes off. Show you one more time here. Remember, safety ring on all the time. Until this is in the water and set and you're ready to walk away, the safety ring stays in position. Push down on the pan, releases the dog, which will release this bar, releases this dog, the active jaw comes up. 70 pound beavers have come into this. I've had them in here. They come in, it flips them over, it disorients them. This jaw comes up, hooks on the top, you're in position of uh, having your beaver caught. He's alive, he's sitting in there. One other little point about this, is, again, it's a capture device to hold them live. The four inches of water, beavers have a tendency to overheat, even in cold weather. He also needs to be able to groom himself. He can get down in the water if it's warm out, cool himself off, climb up out of the water and groom himself in colder weather and they'll actually be in pretty good shape when you get to them. Well, right now we've turned the trap around so that I can show you where you're gonna be in your next position on this. We've already done the setting, we've got it down. Now you've gotta bait it and you're gonna to have to anchor this trap and you're gonna work from this end of the trap at this point. Your two by four is in place, your safety's on. A uh, Couple things you're gonna be going into. Anchoring, baiting, and uh, other ways of uh, securing this trap. They're all covered in the, the, uh, the full length production of this video. But right now we're just say at this point, got 10 to 11 inch sticks for bait. They're gonna be placed on the back of the trap. No higher than this upper, upper bar. You would wire them on the back with a leg gauge wire. And you're probably gonna wanna attach one on either side of say, so your typical beaver trapping wire. Uh, nothing, nothing lighter than 14 gauge. And even there I would double that up. And that's what you're gonna to use to anchor this to, whether it's a tree or uh, a, a, some horizontal log. And if you can't, you need something, use a fence post or a t stake, uh, trap stake. But that's it, you've wired in your bait, now you've gotta get ready to put this in the water. And I wanna show you how to carry this trap, because this is the position it's gonna be in while you carry it. First thing you wanna do is never place your fingers inside the jaws. You're gonna take the trap, picking it up carefully, Bring it back towards you with your fingers in the frame. Now when you pick the strap up and you carry it, if it was to go off, in this position, you might get a little slap on the back of the fingers from the chain link, but it's not gonna cause any major damage if you've got your jaw, fingers caught in the jaws. Pick the trap up carefully, carry it to where you've gotta go, place it down in the water, bring your hands back, holding onto your uh, tie wire or whatever you're gonna use to anchor this thing in place. Tie it off, three to four inches of water down there. Cut yourself a little stick, maybe something just a little bit longer than you need so you keep your fingers out here. Reach down with that stick, flip that safety ring. I'm gonna reach in there to show you what I mean, but right here, this safety ring. Take your two by four off, flip that safety ring right over there. Step back, come back in the morning, you'll have your beaver. 
Okay, what we've got here is a, two of the Hancock style traps. The original style trap right here, and this is the uh, one we just showed you how to set the coral version made in Canada. A uh, couple of things right off the bat I'm sure you're gonna notice. On the original we have a couple of locks, and on the, original, on the new one we have just a single lock. The single lock is all that's needed. Sometimes the doubles have actually uh, locked up on one side and left the spring open, so the, this is a slight improvement. They're spring-loaded, they work fine. Uh, you also notice this one here has been in the water about 250 days a year, 200, 250 days a year over the last 10 years. And as you can see, it's, it's gotten dull in color, and, but that's a lot of use for a trap. So there's certain things that we're gonna have to go over on it to show you what maintenance to look for. And it's a shiny one, but it's going to uh, dull up just like this. Let me go over here and show you some of the things that have changed. You've seen the pan on the other one. On here, the original, this pan here, is just like a regular old foothold trap, pan style. This has a tendency to wear up, particularly the pan itself. And it can be replaced uh, as the notch wears out because it's rusting from all edges. And that can, that's a replacement part. That's something to watch for. If it starts getting loose, you might want to think about replacing it. The other thing that's a, it's an improvement, on the coral trap, the new trap, these bars through here are bolts with aircraft nuts that will loose, that you can take off and replace. The trap, the springs here, will need to be replaced at some point in the lifetime. On the old style, they're nailed, big 20 penny spikes that go through there with cotter pins on the end, makes it a little difficult to get them out. So that's, that's been an improvement I like. This trap, to point out all the things that's been changed on it, is it's got a brand new trigger pan area. Chain link has been completely replaced. And uh, several of the cotter pins that hold the frame in the back here in place have been, had to be replaced just from wear and tear. Uh, a couple of the other improvements I like about this new trap is down here, I don't know if you can see this, but these bows on the side that hold the chain link. On the bottom of both of them, they're riveted. On the new coral style, the top part of the bow, where you need to take that off to replace the chain link, comes standard with a cotter pin that can be moved. The original Hancock style trap, that's also riveted, and you need to take that off with a cold chisel, drill it out, and replace place it. Now I've replaced all mine with cotter pins now, because all of mine have had their chain link replaced in the 10 years that we've had them. Uh, but those are the things to look for. Your springs start to get weak. They can be replaced. They make replacement springs, just like these over here. And uh, that's really about it. They're, they're very similar. They operate the same way. They set the same way. You know how to use one, you know how to use the other. <laughs>